Hello again, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I have here to look at a Peugeot partner van. This is a taxi, taxi version, it's automatic gearbox as well. Okay, we're gonna get inside, have a look at what's going on with this one. Okay, we're inside, we're just gonna get it hooked up to the scan tool. We have a 2016 Peugeot partner B9. Okay, so we're just finished scanning. We have P242F particle filter detected worn. Now I know that this code has been cleared. We don't actually have an engine light on. Someone's been trying to clear the fault codes and whatever. This one's only done 78,000 miles. You don't usually see that code come up on these with that sort of mileage. But it is a taxi, so I, I take it it's been idling a lot and doing a lot of round town journeys. So we're gonna go in and physically check what the health of the DPF is because, well not physically, I mean, check it through the diagnostic machine, what the actual live data is for the DPF. Uh, data stream, go to information number two for these. Distance before the replacement of the particle filter. Uh, a good idea of checking how healthy the DPF is, the average distance between the regens. Uh, it should be sort of between three to 600 miles if it's a good DPF. Particle filter DPF pressure. We'll check that one as well. Twenty-two millibars. It is blocked. Dist distance remaining before the particle filter needs to be replaced is on zero. So that's like a sort of sort of calculated timer on how the vehicle's been driven, basically. Distance travelled since the last region, 240 miles, and it's averaging a region every 376 miles. So I'd say the DPF is in quite good health. Um, yeah, so looks like we might just need to do a DPF clean, reset the values of the DPF, uh, just to tell it it's had a new one after it's been cleaned, and it all should be well. As long as there is no damage to the DPF, we should be able to get that down to sort of between two to six millibars of pressure would be nice. I'm we'll just check the DPF on it, make sure it looks clean. This has got a, an aftermarket sort of system on it because it's it's been adapted for a taxi. So it's got like a, I think it must have a, yeah, it's got a um, disa disabled access conversion on the back end. So just having a look over the engine bay. Normally you'd see the DPF pressure sensor here on these, but it's a little bit different this one. looks like the DPF is not part of the catalyst and most of these have got a 50-50 so catalyst and then DPF all in one unit but there's no DPF pressure sensors here so we're gonna have to get the vehicle up and see is the DPF underneath okay so we just filled up our gun here with the DPF cleaning fluid okay here we have the DPF on this vehicle here over here we have the inlet and outlet DPF pressure sensor pipes you got this is the one after the DPF Got that one before. So we've disconnected and hooked into that with our gun here. Okay, now we're just gonna squeeze the trigger. Oh, it's gonna leak. Looks like we need a new hose. Okay, we've now got that sorted. It's quite noisy that the walled. This tank actually goes up to about 150 psi. That's the pressure I just used the max pressure on it. Blast it in and let it sit for one or two minutes. Okay, back inside the vehicle, engine running. I'm gonna hold the revs up. Now if we keep an eye on the graph for the DPF pressure, we wanna see that coming down around sort of 40 or between 40 to 60, 30 to 60 millibars in around that region. Shouldn't be below 30 millibars, but it shouldn't be above 60 really. Okay, so we are now down around 31 millibars of pressure at 3000 RPM. I'm gonna let that idle down, see where we come to. Two millibars of pressure, oh, it's come down to zero. That will come back up a little bit in just a minute. Okay, now the DPF's clean, we're gonna go back and do some special functions on here, special function. 
replacement parts this is the only way to do it you can't just reset the um, values without saying it's got a new part basically so we're going to work on the emissions replacement of the particle filter start the engine okay switch off the ignition switch it on again start the engine again okay we'll wait for that okay a few more on and off cycles of the ignition and that has now been successful so we'll go back now we'll read the data stream so what we're looking for was the actual physical pressure of the DPF to come down and also this distance remaining before you need to replace the particle filter to be reset. So that's been reset again to 120,000 miles. And we have, let's start the engine. It might take a few minutes for the, for the pressure of the DPF to sort of settle around where it's going to be. But anywhere between sort of 2 to 6 millibars is a good DPF pressure. So we're currently on 4 millibars of pressure, which is good. 3000 RPM is around about 31 millibars, 33 millibars of pressure. Now one of the things that this guy does, he's a taxi and I've just been having a chat with him about his driving behaviour. Um, and he's admitted to me that yeah, obviously once he gets in the van, he can he'll sit there for half an hour or more with the vehicle idling, um, because of course it's cold in the mornings especially, and he doesn't want to sit there in a cold van while he's waiting for customers. So when he's parked up, he does leave the vehicle idling. Um, I've told him about obviously how how that can affect the DPF. If you're idling for too long, it will block the DPF, and he just basically said that he's he's happy to. If he's got to come back once a year and have the DPF cleaned, he's he's happy at that rate. These vehicles are quite good, actually. They're not as temperamental as, as others. You can idle these quite a lot before you would get a DPF blockage. Um, but obviously, the more you idle your car, the more likely it is that you're going to block your DPF. So if you don't need to idle your car, I would always say, as soon as you stopped, turn it off. Um, you're going to have a, a lot of less carbon buildup, not only in your, in your DPF, but your EGR, your... Uh, inlet manifold all that sort of stuff so again this tool I will put the link in the video description where you can buy it with a 10% discount code I have had some people say the 10% discount code doesn't work um, because sometimes if they've already got a sale on like a 10% or 20% sale off they won't do another 10% off basically with the fault code I mean sorry with the discount code last thing we need to do is just confirm that we have cleared the fault code so we have to clear that have to turn the ignition off engine off ignition on clear the fall code switch it off switch it on and then we confirm that the fall code is no longer present okay so that's it we're all finished on the Citroen Blingo see you in the next video